Hi, thank you, Marco. Hi, I'm Jackie. I'm one of the customer relationship managers uh, within customer services, and I will be your presenter today. So I think first we're going to have a poll. What word do you associate with seasons? And that poll should be live just now. And it'll just uh, it'll be a simple word cloud, so it's just a matter of taking the temperature in the room on the seasons. Definitely seems to be a picture emerging there. <laughs> oh, someone's put better. That's nice. It's an optimistic one. All right. I think we're getting the sense. Shall I close it there, Jackie? I think we're getting the uh, general feeling there. Yes, Marco. OK, that's closed. OK, so I will start with our webinar. Before official records began, the ancient ceremony of Seasons marked the official transfer of land ownership. The ceremony involved handing over a clod of earth and stones to represent the transfer of land from one owner to another. One of the earliest records is from 1248, when Sir Malcolm, son of the Earl of Lennox, conferred full seizing of some of the lands at Strathblane to Sir David Graham. As well as a clod of earth, other symbols were used to transfer other rights. For example, fishing rights were represented by a cobble, a small fishing boat, and an oar or net. The 1617 Registration Act of the Old Parliament of Scotland allowed individuals to have their ownership deeds recorded in the official registers for the first time. The general registers of seasons was description based as maps were not yet accurate or widely enough used. It is a register of deeds and was set up with three main objectives. Publicity, it is there for all to see. Security, the title is recorded and cannot be lost. Accessibility, it can be easily searched, although I know some of you might disagree. The general register of seasons was the first national land register in the world with the first entry in the General Register of Seasons being an annual rent right to Robert Pitcairn, a tailor in the Canongate, secured on a property in Pitferny Fife. The register has been maintained in different forms, sometimes running in parallel, for example, the particular register and the borough register. Local registers were created because deeds in the early days of registers had to be submitted within 60 days of execution, and this could present difficulties for those in outlying areas. This long rule no longer applies, and Dingwall was the last of the apparel registers to close in six, 1963. The Register of Seasons is a historical register of deeds affecting land and comprises 33 divisions called counties. These counties correspond to ge the geographical counties that divided the country before regionalisation. For example, Lanark, Ayr, Wigtown. Deeds affecting land in a particular county are registered in that season county. The keeper has no responsibility for the intrinsic valid validity of any deed which is recorded or for the soundness of the title which a series of recorded deeds gives in respect of any particular property. The keeper has, over the years, in order to preserve the faith of the record, pointed out errors in deeds presented for recording so that they may be corrected before the deeds are recorded. She has, however, only powers of persuasion in this respect and only very limited powers to refuse to accept a deed for recording. To identify a property, the season register relies on the property description contained in the deeds submitted for recording. This is different from the land register, where the precise extent and location of a property are identified on the Ordnance Survey map. The 1868 the Land Registration Scotland Act was introduced. This defines the register as it is today. Before a deed 
is officially registered in the seizing register, it goes through four stage process. The first three stages are required by law. Interestingly, the most useful part, the search sheet, is not required by law. So the four stage process is we have the presentment book, the minute book, the record volume and the search sheet. The presentment book was historically a record of all deeds presented for recording but not having completed the recording process. It comprises brief details of every deed, such as deed type, the names of the party to the deed and the address of the subjects. At the presentment book stage, each deed is allocated to the appropriate county and given a daily running number and presentment date. You can search by name or address. There is a charge of £3 plus VAT to search the presentment book. After the deeds have been checked to ensure they meet the legal requirements for recording, a summary of the deed is created by a seizing drafter. This summary is called a minute. Each county has its own minute book and for ease of reference, each minute is allocated a yearly running number, indicating the position of that minute in the annual intake for that county. Again, you can search the minute book by name or address and there's a charge of £3 plus VAT to search the minute book. And I think we have another poll, Marco. Yep, that should be launched just now. It's just do use the presentment and slash or the minute book. That's a pretty good number of responses right there. Um, do you want to? Uh, can you see the results actually, Jackie? Uh, I cannot know. Oh, OK, they might be in the chat, but it's uh, a pretty healthy 16% uh, for yes. Uh, no, neither is 71% and then about 5, 7% for uh, only the presentment book and only the minute book. OK. I'll close it there. Here you can see some of the results for a search in the presentment book in the county of Concarden for the surname Smith. The search was undertaken on the 24th of February 2022, and you can see there is an advance notice that has been presented for registration, but have, has not yet completed the process. You can see it gives you the details of the date, the daily number, the deed type, the status, the parties, the property address and the county. And you can use these hyperlinks to go direct to the search sheet if applicable. The advance notice is actually the same advance notice. It's just been entered twice because once for each of the parties. Some of the older deeds will be withdrawn and as they haven't completed the recording process, they will still show in the presentment book. And here you can see some of the results of the minute book using the same criteria. And again, you have the date, daily number, deed type, I'm not sure why that's not there for those ones, status, name, property address, county, and a search sheet number if available. All seasons deeds must be recorded in strict chronological order according to county. A deed presented in on any one day will not be visible on the search sheet until all deeds for the same county have completed the recording process. If you are wondering why a deed is not shown on the search sheet, it may be we have not finished recording the other deeds presented the same day for that particular county. You can check the dates the minute book is up to by checking the currency statement on Scotless. As you can see from this example, Aberdeen is on the 18th of February 2022. This means all deeds presented on or before that date should be on the search sheet unless withdrawn. You'll also note that each county has a different date. So I'll just take you through um, take you through a search sheet and explain some of the dates and entries on it. So here we have reference to burdens deeds. This deed has been identified from the major area search sheet as containing reservations, conditions, burdens which affect the subjects on this sheet.
um, search sheet volume and folio. These numbers indicate the search sheet volume in which the search sheet is located and the page on which the search sheet can be found. This is for internal use only. Search sheet number. Each new search sheet is allocated a unique reference number. A description of the subjects heads up the search sheet. It will include a reference to a larger area of ground from which the subjects originated. In other words, the major area. The description of the property is generally taken from the deed, which first disposes of subjects as a separate entity. This deed is known as the foundation or breakaway deed. Major area search sheet number. The major area search sheet number shows where the subjects have come from. Consideration. Yearly running number, daily running number and recording date. So I have book and folio number. Again, this shows the record, vol record, vol record volume book and folio numbers. Date of execution. The date the deed was signed. Search sheet revisor's initials. Each new search sheet entry was checked and ratified by a search sheet revisor who then initialed the entry. That is not something anybody uh, has to worry about. Reports notes. The form 10 and 11 report reference numbers used to be added to the search sheet and indicated that the property may be about to be transferred in the land register. And closing note. Title number to which the search subjects have been transferred. This note closes the search sheet as a short note. In instances where only part of the subjects are being transferred, the note would give brief details of grantees and the description of the subjects being transferred. This is known as a long note and long notes do not close the search sheet. We will now be looking at some season searches. Firstly, we are going to be searching the county of Inverness under the name Donald Duck. I will let you decide which of these two images on the right hand side this relates to. You can see from the results of the, that the first search sheet, 12166, relates to 0.152 acres at Burroch. And the second search sheet, 28, remember that number, relates to several large areas of ground at Burbloch. It is most likely that an individual property will be on the search sheet with a higher number as it will have been carried out from the major area. And if you are confident, you could go ahead and purchase that search sheet. However, if you want to double check, you can look at the indexes free of charge. In the indexes, you will see the surname at the top right hand corner of the index page. And from the index, you can see Donald's name and that he owns West Haven, Burbloch. And it is the first search sheet 12166. Further down, you will see this property is also indexed under Jean Seymour Hude. And this is more likely to be a co proprietor. If we now look at the search sheet 12166, you will indeed see that it has been carried out of search sheet 28 and that Donald Duck and Jean Seymour Hood Jean Seymour Hood Duck obtained the property on the 27th of August 1991 and that Jean, not Daisy, is Donald's wife. You can also see that Dr Duck and Mrs Duck brought an additional area of land in September 1993. Next, we're going to do an address search for 177 High Street, Portobello. If we change the county search criteria to search by address and the county to the Middle Northern and enter 170 High Street, we will get the following results. You can see there is no option to add the town. We have three search sheets relating to 177 High Street, but these are in Dalkeith. So our search sheet is not there. 
where could it be? I will check the list of indexes, not the indexes themselves, and we'll see an index for High Street Portobello. And when we go to that index, you will see that the information at the top right hand corner says C Portobello High Street. If we re-enter the information, but this time using Portobello High Street, we get the following results. From the result, we can see that there's only one search sheet relating to that address, so I feel pretty confident this is correct and I would go ahead and buy it. And from the information on the search sheet, we can see we have found the correct search sheet. And the, and the property was previously called Middlefield House. If we had searched using the name Middlefield House, had we known it, we'd see the indexes refer to the entry to the entry for Portobello for High Street Portobello, which was the search we did. We can also search by house name. In this instance, we're going to do a search for a property called Glen Isla in Selkirk that we know is on Melrose Road. As you can see from the search results, it has returned 184 possible search sheets. This is because it has located search sheets related to both Glen Isla and Melrose, Melrose Road. However, you can see that the eighth entry down relates to Glen Isla, 20 Isla Road, and it 20 Melrose Road, and it is search sheet 1823. And Examine the search sheet, you can see from the minute on the 26th of August 1938, the property is known as Glen Isla. You can also search by house name alone. Here we're looking for a property called Shanrock House in the county of Ross and Cromarty. You can see this has returned four results, but in this case we know it's the Mansion House of Shanwick we are looking for, so can go ahead and purchase the search sheet without checking the indexes. And we can see from the description the search sheet we've purchased is indeed for the Mansion House of Shanwick, plus two additional areas of ground. Our next search relates to searching against company names in the case Global Energy Nick Limited. You can see this has returned four results, but it is Dunscaith House I am interested in. And you can also see that Dunscaith House has two search sheets. So to get the full information, you'll have to purchase both search sheets. And here we can see search sheet 30860 is for Dunscaith House and 307553 is for additional ground at Dunscaith House. I will now show you some ideas for locating the search sheet of an area of ground where you do not th know the name of the owner and it doesn't have any postal address. This can be highly complex and time consuming and could involve the purchase of multiple search sheets. So you may prefer to ask a property information team to do this for you, but I thought we would share some tips with you. I'm going to try and find out who owns the field outlined in red. You may notice on the map there is a property called Balcragan Farm and also an area of ground annotated Balcragan. This will be our starting point. I've searched by entering Balacragan in the street name for the county of Ross and Cromarty. You could have also used Balacragan. I can, you can see this has returned three searches, three search sheets and four indexes. I'm not sure which is the correct search sheet of the three search sheets 
three search sheets. Three search sheets shown. I should probably shouldn't have put such a tongue twister in there. And I think we have another poll, Marco. Yes, uh, it's launching right now. And responses coming nice and quickly there. Um, about 50 responses, about 30% yes and 74% no. 25-75 uh, no. Yes to no. I'll close it there. Okay. Thanks very much. By using the measuring tool on the on the land register part of Scotland, I can see that the field I'm looking for is approximately 5.6 acres. Please note this is just a guide and cannot be guaranteed to be 100% accurate. If we go back to our search sheet results, we can see the first result relates to 5.228 hectares or 12 acres, so it is unlikely to be the search sheet, although it is possible. I will therefore examine the next search sheet from the results. 23390. On examining the search sheet 23390, we can see from the description that it relates to the Croft of Balacragan, extending to 5.293 acres. Have we got the right sheet? However, if we keep examining the search sheet, we can see that there was a sale of five acres at Balacragan Farm on the 28th of August. 2015. While this area of ground has now been registered in the land register, this type of searching would work if the title was unregistered or still in the season register. Please note, however, this is not an exact method of finding the area of land and can involve a lot of trial and error, which in this case it did. And if we look at the title plan, we can see we have found the correct field. We're going to conduct a similar search for this area of ground at Bosinch in Duddingston. You can see from the measuring tool that the area is approximately 16 acres. If we enter Bo Bo Bosnich in the street name of the County of Midlothian and search against this, we get the following result. As we can see, there is not a search sheet, immediately obvious, but there is an index. From the index information, we can see that entry two relates to 15 acres of ground and the search sheet is 138017. Is this the correct search sheet? And if we go to 138017, you can see it is indeed 15 acres of ground known as Bosinch, bounded on the northeast by Duddingston Road West, and that it is owned by the Scottish Wildlife Trust Limited. I'm now going to show you another possible way to find an area of ground. I'm currently the landlord of Duddingston House in Edinburgh. I want to know who owns the land to the east. Has there been some unexplained damage to my property? From starting in the land register, I can see the search sheet for my property is 227065. So I will click on the hyperlink to take me to the seasons part of Scotless. From the search sheet, I can see it is closed as it has a short note on it, so I need to know the major area the land came from. If I click on search sheet image and go to the first page, I can, I can see this was carried out from 111193, so I'll need to examine that search sheet. Having examined 111193, I can't find the area of ground I'm looking for on that search either. So I will need to go back to the next major area 
88. So for 88, I can see the search sheet. This relates to a large area of ground at Duddingston. So I'm on the right, I think I'm on the right track. After examining the search sheet, which may take some considerable time as there was over 280 pages, I noticed an entry for Duddingston Golf Course. I knew there was a golf course nearby, and as the property damage is being caused by golf wall breaking windows, I think it is possible that it is the golf cone that owns the area of ground to the east. As you can see, this can be very time consuming. The last three searches took me some considerable time to complete and is potentially very expensive as I had to purchase three, search three separate search sheets. So as I said earlier, you may prefer our property information team to do this for you. The final search I'm going to do is one for married women. As you can see, the property 74 Poolrig Street is owned by George Russell and Joan Adam Baxter or Russell. Baxter evidently being Joan's maiden name and Russell being her married name. If we use Scotland to search under her maiden name Baxter, and then look at indexes, you can see that we have an entry for Joan Adam Davison or Russell, 74 Pilrig Street, and it's the same search sheet. We can also search under the name Russell. And from the indexes, you can see we have Joan Adam Davison, wife of George, but it goes to C. Baxter. Scotless, of course, would return both results if you entered it, entered the information into that for her married name. However, I just thought I'd give you some tips as it can be a useful way for searching married women. Next, I'm going to show you a couple of unusual scenarios. Firstly, we're going to look at the part of the search sheet for Burfield House in Dornoch. You can see on the 23rd of February 2001, Burfield House Limited LLC transferred land to Burfield House Limited. Under exception from the whole subjects of 0 0.371 hectares delineated red on plan B and it's to said disp by grantors. And you can also see where it says here, note, carry out exception of 0 0.371 hectares if and well dealt with. This means that the exception remains on the search sheet because it is not a sale, it is an exception and will not be given its own search sheet. On the, 20, on the 4th of April 2003, you can see this area of land was purchased by Ewan Concaird Coburn Curry and it is that point is transferred to its own search sheet. This is quite unusual, but I thought it would mention to you in case you had come across this before and wondered what it meant. Here we have the disposition for 17 Caroline Crescent Alva. As you can see, the stamp says Registers of Scotland, General Registers in County of Clackmannan, Fish 24, Frame 14, presented and recorded on the 19th of May 1998. But if we look at the search sheet for it, we know we have got the same deed because the fish and fish number is the same. But here on the search sheet, it says 22nd of May 1998. Why the discrepancy? This is simple human error. And while the keeper tries to maintain the integrity of the register, mistakes do happen. Deeds were in the past stamped by hand with a manual date stamp and if it, whoever was doing this forgot to change the date, when they started the morning, the incorrect date would be added to the deed. The correct date will always be the one on the search sheet or the minute book, if applicable. 
So I would just like, um, in case people don't know, uh, we have now introduced uh, self-serve copy deeds for seasons, on seasons only at the moment, uh, and the Register of Deeds will be launched soon. Um, so although the price is the same as it is governed by the fee order, it means you can uh, get them instantly. And also we have um, some guidance on the information that would be ideal to input if you're searching for your copy deed. So it was just to make you aware of the new functionality of Scotless. And that is it from me, Marco. Thanks very much, Jackie. Uh, that was great. We'll give it a couple of seconds while everyone absorbs the information, uh, possibly still reeling from the rapid fire quiz and uh, in case there are any questions coming through. If you have any questions for us afterwards, of course, please do feel free to email them to the customer relationship team or to um, uh, events, the events team, and we can pass it on to Jackie or someone else within Ross who will be able to answer the question. Actually, I think that might be the next slide. If you can move this one forward. Perfect. Thanks very much. Yeah, so do feel free to call us or just send us a quick email. In fact, as with before, you should just be able to click the hyperlink of the email. It'll automatically open one up. I'll also take the opportunity to post our feedback survey in the chat just now. Um, will this be available as a recording? Uh, yes, it will be in time. Um, we'll need a couple of days to get everything edited, um, uh, do a little bit of redaction because there's slightly different rules around uh, publishing. Uh, permanent things online, but yes, uh, this will uh, the recording will be available. I will put it up on YouTube. Uh, I've got yeah. a question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Jackie. Uh, oh, good to see. Oh, I saw that one. I saw that one pop up. Uh, yeah. So they're the same charge as a uh, copy deeds ordered from uh, us via customer services would be. The price hasn't changed. Um, it's not any cheaper to order them yourself, and I say that's because it is governed by the fee order. And yes, if you use the self self portal, you will get them emailed to you um, more or less instantly, evidently. Uh, that would depend on internet speed and things like that. I've got one more question and uh, don't think it was covered that if subjects come from the borough registers, we can still access those search sheets. So those search sheets. What is the turnaround time for the same? Um, so for anything from the first series, the borough or the particular register, you would have to contact customer services um, and our property information team and searches team would be able to obtain them for you. I'm not aware of the current turnaround times, but our service level agreement is five working days. Thanks, Jackie, and thanks for the question. Um, We'll give it another couple of seconds for any more questions out there. Um, I'll just quickly post our feedback survey um, in the chat and I'll send it around in the uh, email afterwards with the slides. Um, very grateful for any feedback you want to give us on this presentation and other things you'd like to see. Oh, uh, what's the information, uh, what's the email for the property information team and the cost? If you just give me a moment. So the property information team, you can email that direct to customer.services at ros.gov.uk and we can distribute that to our the, very, the correct team for you. And if you give me a second, I'm just trying, going to find the cost for you. Um, so I believe that is uh, twenty-five pounds plus VAT. Okay, thanks very much, Jackie. Give another couple of seconds, but then I think we'll call it there. Thank you ever very much to everyone for attending. Thank you very much, Jackie, for an interesting presentation, and hopefully we'll see you soon at another Ros webinar. 
thanks all very much and see you soon.